Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today we're gonna to look at a great network scanning tool, piece of software that you can download called LandSweeper. It's completely free. It will scan your entire network and pick up every single device that is on your network and retrieve all the information that is needed uh, on those particular servers, routers, switches, um, if you've got, you know, if you've got a uh, television, if you've got smart devices, Wi-Fi devices, it'll scan the whole lot across multiple IP ranges and subnets and all this sort of stuff. Great, great tool. We're going to look at how to install it and how to use it right after this. So here we are on our Windows computer. And we're gonna use a tool called LandSweeper. You can easily download this by going into Google and typing in LandSweeper. And as the name suggests, it's going to sweep across your LAN, your network, and detect anything that's on your network and try to retrieve that information quite, quite easily. So go into LandSweeper and you can do a free download. Uh, it is completely free. Uh, until a certain amount of um, you know uh, scan uh, assets that you find, and then it becomes a tool that you can expand and pay a subscription fee for um, if you do want to scan more uh, more assets. Okay, so you can go ahead and download that. You can actually get a bit more information around each of the features that Land Sweeper can do. There's also a fantastic support section on the uh, Land Sweeper website with a full uh, list of knowledge base articles. If you wanna do configuration of particular items, uh, there's plenty of information in here. And there's also a great community that you can raise questions and get those questions answered. So there's plenty of plenty of information available on the LandSweeper website. Once that is downloaded, we can then go ahead and install it quite easily and just follow the prompts to install LandSweeper on your computer. Now you wanna be able to set this up on a computer that preferably has access to every single device on your network. So if you've got some sort of a monitoring server or a server that you know, if you're running this at home, you probably don't have too much of a big configuration in terms of firewalls. But if you are running this in a corporate environment, in a business environment, and you have multiple firewalls, perhaps multiple subnets, try to make sure that uh, the computer, the server that you're installing LandSweeper on has full access to your entire network. So that all the firewall rules, all the ports that are necessary to be opened um, are visible uh, on the server that you're trying to install this from or the computer that you're trying to install this onto. So we can just go ahead and do a easy install. So this is installs LandSweeper with its own SQL component, uh, compact database, sorry. Um, or you can do the advanced install if you do have a separate SQL server, um, you know, acting as, as your database server that you want to point that to. For the purpose of this, we'll just do a easy install. You want to take note of these ports. So these are the ports that LandSweeper will use, port 82 and port 83. So when you do open up your web browser, once this is installed, you will navigate to the either the DNS name, the FQDN, of the server or the desktop that you're working on here, or the IP address, colon, and then the port number 82 for HTTP, and for secure HTTPS, you do port 83. So likewise, what we said before about the firewalls, you wanna make sure that these particular ports are also open on your firewall if you do have that form of security on your network. So take note of those ports. Can then go ahead and just install. That'll create everything that it needs, all the directories, extract the files, and we begin the installation of that software. You'll then be asked if you want to sign up for the LandSweeper newsletter. You can put in your details in here, or you can skip the LandSweeper um, newsletter subscription if you so want to. It will then direct you to the LandSweeper website, give you a little spiel about it uh, installing successfully. If you know your computer's, um, if, you're, if you know your computer name, you can easily just go in and uh, open up a web browser and try to navigate to that. So to find your computer name, you can go into the start area, right click on computer, go into properties, list, see it listed here, mail serve dash O1. You can also find your computer's IP address by going into the start menu and type in CMD to bring up the command prompt. And you can type in IP config. 
And what this will show you is it'll show you the IP address of your computer, which is 172.16.1.2. Yours will likely be different. So in the case that you open up your web browser and you cannot navigate to that uh, mailserve.1 dot your domain name dot com or no domain name, whatever it may be, you can try to also do it via the uh, via your IP address. Now also remember that those ports that we um, looked at earlier, which is port 82 and port 83. So we now should be able to open up our browser and type in, I'm going to type in my IP address. Okay, port 82. And you will see that your LAN sweeper page will show up. This is your LAN sweeper first run wizard. So it's gonna ask me, uh, what IP range do you want to scan? So it's automatically detected that I'm in the 172.16.1 range. So it's gonna scan everything from one through to 254. And the next, and you can do that through. Uh, or you can put in a bigger range if you so need to, to be able to scan more items. So I'm just gonna leave it as the standard for now. Click on next. Actually, what I'll do is let's just make it a bit simple. We'll just scan only a few, only one through to 10. Enable scanning for my domain, which is redghost.com. So it's gonna scan my entire domain and look for things in there. It's gonna ask me now for my username and password. Now, by default, Landsweeper will scan the IP addresses and we'll try to retrieve as much information as possible. In the case of this, this is now gonna be able to go into my Windows computer and gather a lot more information directly from the Windows computer or the Windows server. So you can put in your administrator credentials into here, so then Landsweeper will automatically you know, use those admin credentials to log in to a computer or into a server and retrieve a lot more information, for example, registry information, software information around you know, your programs that you have installed, etc. So if you do want to do that, you can put in your credentials right in here. So I'm just gonna say skip it for now. SNMP community to scan your network devices. We'll leave that as default, leave it as public. Similar to your Windows admin passwords, it also can scan your Linux and your Mac computers or servers. Uh, similarly, you can put in your SSH credentials or your root credentials to log into either of these two. So if you've got Linux, you may know a bit, a bit more about what SSH is, so you put in your root and password. If you've got your Apple Mac, uh, if you've got a, you know, a laptop or a desktop Mac computer, you can put in your standard username and password from your Mac into here, and then that way it will scan that and get a whole bunch of information from your Mac. VMware, if you are using VMware as a tool for virtualization, uh, if you've got VMs running, virtual machines running within a hypervisor environment, which is what this is gonna be doing, you can put in your credentials. It will then log in to, into your VMware ESXi host or into vCenter and then grab a whole bunch of information directly from your VMs themselves and your ESXi, your VMware hosts. And then it's gonna ask you for the date format. Depending on where you are around the world, you'll put in the date format that you want. I'm here in down under in Australia, so I'm gonna keep it as day, day, month, month, year, 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 year. Finish, and that is now gonna to start to scan. So it's completing one scan, and as we said, it's going to only detect uh, items that I've got from 172.16.1 through to 172.16.1.10. So that will finish and you'll be presented with the login screen for Landsweeper. You'll see it hasn't found too many things. It's only found three things really. Um, it's last seen assets. You can see information around the user, a bit more information around news. That's pulling it directly from the Landsweeper community and the website newsfeed. And you'll see that there's automatically detected some alerts in here. So if you've got you know, patching uh, checks that are enabled within Landsweeper, you can, you can tell you if patches are installed or not across computers. You'll see a bit more um, information from the homepage. Essentially, it's found one Linux, one Windows computer, my domain name, etc. It's got just a local subnet, which it's scanned. And then I can go ahead and break this down and look at my servers individually. It's found just the one server here. What software is installed if I did present it with some uh, necessary login information, all right? And you can, you've got a few other tabs here also. All right, so nice and easy. Um, you can also go into the assets tab up the top 
and you'll see a bit more information. So it's found a Aguero Mac computer. It has found that it is a Linux type um, because it is Unix backend, it just sees it as a Linux computer. It's found that it's this is the IP address, the MAC address, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but what you'll see is that it is red because I didn't present it the credentials to be able to log in and actually do a proper detailed scan. You'll see that there's a few other details in here, another computer that's been found, etc. So if you give it a much wider range to scan, you'll get a lot more information. You can do things like reporting, you can do ping checks. Um, you can do software, you can go back into the scanning tab on the top here. And you'll see that by default, it's going to scan my IP range of 1 through to 10. I can look at a schedule. So it's going to scan every single day at a particular time. Right, nice and easy. See some options. If you want to do no ping, if you want to do no SSH. I can also go and customize it and expand this if I want to now to 254. All right. And that will then go and scan it at that particular time. I can easily change that. I can see my scanning queue for things that are currently scanning. Currently, there is nothing scanned, but when there is, when your um, LAN sweeper is scanning your network, you will see them in here. So that's really it. So I mean, from within here, you can actually add multiple scanning targets if you want to be able to scan more and more areas. You can go and put in the credentials that you need to be able to scan through. Um, and look, there's a whole bunch of stuff. As I said, I'm not going to go into details of exactly what every single feature is within uh, Land Sweeper. You can go and play through that. And there is a huge online community if you want more information from there also. So that is my summary of Land Sweeper. Um, probably one of the best tools that uh, is available in terms of scanning your network. Um, putting in your, you know, your IP ranges, your entire IP range, your subnets, etc. Doing a full scan, a full sweep of your computer network, um, pulling up every single piece of information that is available to it. Uh, fantastic tool. Um, please do let me know if you do if you do find this tool and and you know some of my other videos helpful. I'd love to hear your comments below. Um, you commenting does help me to grow my channel and spread the word. Uh, we will talk to you next time. Thanks for watching. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel Digital Byte Computing just on the button there for more videos.